In this video, I'd like to summarize some of the tests that we've looked at so far, the parametric tests, and in particular highlight the key assumptions um, behind these tests. And I'm going to contrast those with the assumptions behind the non-parametric tests, which I'll get into shortly after this video because you're going to need to know that information in order to know which test is appropriate to apply to, the, to your future data sets. So let's first talking about parametric tests and we're going to deal with some of the key assumptions. And our first test was a one sample test of the mean, mu. So we had a sample and we wanted to test whether it had the same mean as a known population. And uh, the first assumption, or the first, I guess, condition, I guess, we considered was uh, it had a a, if we had a large sample, say n is greater than 30. And in that situation, we could use our z statistic and assume and test the mean value of our sample with the normal distribution. Okay, and um, and in that case, the population need needed not be normal. With a large sample size, we could invoke the central limit theorem that says that the the repeated samplings of the mean will tend towards a normal population if n is large, regardless of the population distribution itself, right? Okay, so we could use a z-statistic in that situation. Um, alternatively, um, we had to assume a normal population distribution, okay, if if n was less than 1, or sorry, n was small, less than 30, and less than 1 would indeed be a small sample. But if we had a small sample, we had to assume the population distribution was normal, in which case we use the, the t statistic. And so t or z was computed by taking uh, the mean of the sample, the difference of the mean of the sample from that of the known population or the test population, divided by the estimate for the standard deviation of x bar, which was the standard deviation of the test population divided by the square root of n, the size of the sample. All right, the, the second test we did was a two sample test of the mean. So we had two samples and we wanted to know whether they came from populations with the same means. And in, in that situation, we used the T, we used a t-test. And the t-test generally assumes the population sampled are normally distributed. And the statistic we looked at, so t was computed based on the difference in the sample means divided by the estimate for the standard deviation of that difference, which was the pooled standard deviation of the two uh, populations, and then uh, we have to multiply by the square root of one over n one plus one over square root of n two. The third test we did was a one sample test of the variance 
or standard deviation. So we had we wanted to know whether a sampled population had the same variance of some known population. And this involved a chi-squared test. And remember, chi-squared uh, is the sum of squares of, of independent variables that are normally distributed. So we had to assume a normal distribution for the populations being sampled. And the chi-squared statistic was calculated as uh, n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared. s squared being the variance of the sampled population, and sigma squared is being the variance of the known population or the, the variance being tested. And then finally, we had the two-sample test of variance in which we had two samples and we wanted to see if their variances differed. And in that situation, we used um, the F test. And so the F variable was the ratio of the greater of the two standard deviate, greater of the two variances and divided by the variance of the other sample. Remember, the variance, the greater variance always goes on top. And F, the F distribution is appropriate for, is the distribution that two chi-squared variables will take. So again, because these are assumed to be chi-squared variables, then the F test also assumes that the populations are normally distributed. OK, so as you can see, the common assumptions are that um, the populations are normal. And thus, because the populations are normal, the the statistics of the samples have known distributions. Or, in, our, in, in the one case noted above, if we have a large sample size, then the central limit theorem can be invoked for any population. OK, so the key assumptions for parametric tests were normal population distributions or for large samples. And these assumptions can be a, a bit restrictive, but the advantage is these tests are relatively simple. Okay, so there's always a trade-off between sort of simplicity and uh, how versatile the method is. Now let me briefly summarize the key assumptions about non-parametric tests. And overall, these have the main advantage in that they make no assumption about the distribution of the population. And they also don't require any large samples, or there's no assumption needed about the sample size. So with this, uh, without these assumptions, you can see that the non-parametric tests are, are more general. They're, they're applicable to a broader range of situations. They come at a slight cost in that they're slightly more expensive. So you would use these, uh, excuse me, by expensive, I mean they're just a little bit more, a uh, little bit more complicated. They just take a little bit more time. And therefore, you should use these when you can't assume a normal population uh, for for what you're sampling, or if you have small sample size, uh, small sample sizes. The other key advantage of non-parametric tests is they can also be applied to uh, lower forms of data, such as ordinal data.
So this concludes this video on this uh, comparison. And the next videos will go into some examples of some non-parametric tests.